Oh, what's up everyone? How's it going? Jonathan here, hanging out at our amazing little spot here in Bali. Wanted to show you guys around and just say uh, hello and that I'm safe and alive. It's been a long flight, oh my God, don't even get me started. Can you see the tired in my eyes? Oh my God, but being up in the skies, 40,000 feet above the sea, witnessing the world pass beneath me, it was like, wow, and you hear that thunder? Oh, it's that time of the year here in Bali, Indonesia, and feeling blessed to be back here. First time I came here was 15 years ago, came here on a surf trip, um, and uh, didn't even do yoga. I came to Bali before I even did yoga. Can you believe that? Um, and uh, yeah, just chilling out here. We got a nice little pool in the backyard. And um, oh my God, it was kind of awesome. I got to like take the flight out here. I didn't even have a place lined up. And I love being able to just like pick up the phone and get like throw in a SIM card into my phone, pick up the phone, make a, send a message. And immediately Ronya and Gabriel are like, dude, come, to, come, come over, you can stay with us, no problem. Um, and yeah, just feeling very, you know, well taken care of and super blessed to be able to have friends around the world. And, um, you know, while I was on the flight, um, I had a lot of crazy epiphanies and I just want you guys to know I'm going to like, just give you the disclaimer right now. I have barely slept in the past 48 hours. I'm in total theta brainwaves right now and I'm not wearing any clothes. In fact, I'm just wearing a towel, so I hope you're okay with that. Um, get used to it, considering the fact that uh, I'm gonna be in Bali for the next two months, and it is tropical th thunderstorm season, and so um, that's the vibe, you know? That's the vibe. So um, just wanted to share, yeah, I guess some insights from the flight, because I was having a lot of really powerful uh, downloads and meditations. I was, I was meditating for probably about I think I did about at least five or six hours of meditation while I was on the flight. And um, it started out in the beginning, I was, I was just feeling a lot of like, I mean, I guess it was excitement because you know, it's like finally a moment where I'm not uh, like being inundated with Wi-Fi and having the ability to, you know, respond to all the messages that are constantly coming into my inbox and doing Facebook lives or doing all the things that distract me from, you know, uh, meditating. And um, it was super exciting because like, I was just really yearning for that, you know, that, that deep dive because um, what I've noticed is that in the past, um, maybe about four months of, of really stepping up my meditation game, I've experienced a profound shift in my perception and my consciousness, and, and many of you have been with me through it. Um, and I'm super grateful for that. And I'm, I'm really, honestly, beyond anything, I'm, I feel really fucking stoked to just be able to to share it, you know, and to like actually be able to be present enough to um, kind of like, you know, like express what's going on inside of me because um, I think that each one of us has a story that needs to be told. You know what I mean? Like there's that story, that, that, that deep yearning to be understood and to be known in this lifetime and, and, and um, to just be understood for what it is that we're going through and, and you know, like going beyond, you know, I'm in this, this kind of like transitionary phase over this past year, actually even into last year, and it was like making the conscious decision to shift from a state of healing to a state of thriving, right? And how was that perception medicine? How is that perception shift? How did that cause a quantum shift in my language and my communication and the way that I share with people, hey, how are you doing? Right, because a lot of times that's a loaded question for people. It's like, oh, oh, you want to know how I'm doing? I'll tell you how I'm doing. You know, I'm in Bali right now, hanging out by my pool. That's how I'm doing. Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> um, but yeah, like you know, um, I went super deep into these meditations, and it was oh my god, it was like 
just completely like dissolved my body and like I mean it was it, it, it kind of starts out with you know I've been doing this breath work practice and um, you know the breath work is really about pulling the emotion out of the body because from the moment you wake up in the morning the first thing that you do is you you know your mind starts thinking right and you usually think about okay you recall oh yeah this is who I am this is where I need to be. I gotta be to work. I gotta, you know, go and go do these things. You know, you gotta start running. The mind starts running. You go into beta brain waves. You go into fight or flight. Your your sympathetic nervous system fires up, and um, and immediately your your body's being flooded with these stress chemicals. Um, and so basically, we're we're in a constant state of fight or flight from the moment we wake up in the morning, and then there comes a point where you finally have a moment of catharsis where you say, holy shit, like I need a shift in my life. Like I need to make a change. I gotta stop running, right? And, and part of my meditation was actually going in and feeling myself pulling my energy back in, right? It was like I was pulling, it was like I was reeling in a fish or something. Like I caught a fish on a hook and I was pulling that energy back in. And once you have that energy in, then you can actually start transmuting it. And a lot of times what happens is we get caught into these unconscious emotional addictions. And you know, it could be like in response to a certain person, like a lot of times we keep people around because they meet that unconscious uh, you know, addiction that we have for a certain emotion and we get fired up by them and we get a re reaction out of them. And so, um, you know, I've just been really present with my emotions and identifying, okay, what are these, you know, different, what are the, what are the emotions and the identifications and the perceptions that are controlling my reality and how can I start to subtly shift them, just small shifts at a time, and, 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 and just being present with that so that I can start to see how it shifts my reality. And so one of the things that I, you know, was really being called to do was to meditate more. And so as I went into that, um, what I started to realize is that there are these moments in my meditations where I have like this just super deep moment where it's like I am speaking to my body so deeply. Like I'm, I'm just like sitting there and I'm saying, listen to me subconscious mind. I am your master. I'm here to tell you how to feel, how to be, how to experience, and I'm here to also like dance with you, you know, and in, in a sense to co-create with you. And, and, and I'm ready to take you to the next level. I'm ready to start to transform and transmute that pain into power, into presence, right? And, 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 and it may not have been that exact statement, but like, honestly, it was like, so deeply profound to like have that moment where where it's like you look eye to eye with yourself right and you like i see you i am here with you and 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 in that moment you take the veil of perception off right you you're 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 out of the unconscious thought pattern you're out of the program right because when we go unconscious it's like we immediately just start running a program again and that program is like a computer program, right? It's like it just, we pick it back up and we just start running the program in our mind and, and we just go right back to the old state of thinking and being and feeling. And, and then we remember, remi you know, remind yourself who you are, right, based on the past. And we, we bring that into the now moment and suddenly we lose access to the infinite potentials that are available right here in this present moment, right? And if you truly want to be a co-creator, a, a, co a conscious creator of your, of your reality and your destiny, if you want to you know, be in this divine union with that, with that essence of creation that is innately within us, right? It is, is innately within our DNA, that, that expression of creation, that unfolding, unwinding Fibonacci spiral of DNA that's encoded and expressed in every gene inside of our body. Like, if you truly want to explore and dance and become the artist or become the alchemist, right? It takes a certain level of, of volition and, and determination to want to say, you know what? I want to start dancing. Like, I, I don't dance enough, you know? Like, I want to start, like, I want to start doing some breath work, you know? Like, I want to start meditating more. Like, I want to start, like, 
getting spiritual or whatever it is that you know that you feel like you need more of and Ronya says yo love welcome to Bali can't wait to see you sister can't believe you're doing live right now 20 hour plane ride I know for real oh my god it's been so nuts can you see it in my eyes can you see it there uh, just but so you guys know too I want to be celebrating my 33rd birthday at ecstatic awakening retreat 33 what huh? what who's getting old what who said you got to get old I don't know what you're talking about well, I'll tell you one thing, 33 is the master number, and many believe that that was the year that Jesus died, so that's pretty cool. Um, definitely always inspired by the story of Jesus and the life of the uh, embodiment of, of source in which we all are. And in fact, I believe it was Jesus that said, you too will do greater things than I because I go through the Creator, and we truly are the co-creators of our reality and so uh, as you change your perception you change your life forever so what is the perception that you feel called to change in this next chapter to begin to rearrange your life and be able to allow things to become strange as you get weird with it in order to shift it get that quantum shift within it and go deep into your genes or lack thereof and be able to start to make love to your future to make love to your body to turn on and tune in to that innate juiciness of that cosmic orgasmic connection that we have to be able to dance with the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system harnessing it like a tool right because the sympathetic nervous system oh my god the autonomic nervous system right it's it's autonomic in a sense that it's automatic in a sense that we up until now have been unconscious to its power but as we become the alchemists of our emotions that is when we begin to realize our true capacity to use the power of visualization and meditation to calm the body down and then turn the body on right and that's the essence of you know tantra to the the art of full expression not even not even just in the, in in the one mind one track minded sense of it but rather to be able to become the alchemist of the body to say okay i'm going to calm this body down i'm going to go into a parasympathetic state but then i'm going to turn it on i'm going to cultivate that that root chakra energy i'm going to pull that energy up into my body up into my brain i'm going to start tuning into the frequency of bliss or joy or whatever frequency of reality you want to dance in right because the more that you raise your awareness you change your awareness you change your perspective right like you could be right here this might be a dimension up here right say that you guys are in a dimension right now and i'm not there yet but i raise my awareness and all of a sudden i'm like Oh, now I'm in this dimension with you guys. Look at that. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, but then I could even raise my awareness even more. And then you guys could go down to like this level. Ooh, uh-oh. Now, I mean, you know, I'm just kind of like freestyling here. But you, if you guys flow with me on this one, like basically dimensions, like infinite dimensions are all stacked up on top of each other right now in this moment and you have the ability to change your perspective and change your dimension. That means that like in a dimensional time space reality where infinite potentials exist, that means that you could literally jump timelines and in that next timeline, you might just be experiencing a different emotional state, a different state of being, but just by jumping over, you might go from a state of like feeling a, a sense of not enoughness or a sense of like, longing or a sense of neediness to a sense of like I'm good enoughness right and just like shift and immediately you are literally in a new time space reality you're on a new timeline and you're in a new dimension and so when we change our reality when we change our perception we change our reality because the perception is like the window through which we perceive and we see it is that veil or that Instagram uh, hashtag filter that you 
put onto your camera in order to make things look cooler or you know shift and make your eyes bigger and your nose skip you know whatever <laughs> lips bigger duck lips you know it's in it's hot you know uh get in the pool all right cool down now um <laughs> I'm having too much fun here, you guys. Again, I literally have not slept in 48 hours. I've been on a flight all the way from Portland, Oregon. Um, my flight was supposed to be like 25 hours and easy, and there was like, oh yeah, this is the perfect flight. And then they're like, actually, no, we're gonna cancel your flight, and you're gonna have to fly all night long. And you know, oh, it's like, come on, you guys, don't do this to me. But it's all good. It all happens for a reason. And you know what? Like. I'm gonna ride this theta brainwave reality of just like being half asleep, half awake and not giving a fuck because you know what? Like just YOLO, right? Or something like that, yeah, YOLO, you only, yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, speaking of YOLO, um, you know, I honestly like, this is my fifth time to freaking Bali. And when I came to Bali for my first time, that was the first time that I ever like got into the water and was literally scared for my life surfing waves that were bigger than my house and 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 breaking on like razor sharp coral reef and I fell in love with this place and I'll never forget walking down the street in Bali Indonesia and this was 12 years ago by the way and um, God I'm just holding up this towel but I just I'm, I'm not gonna hold it up anymore I'm totally naked just so you guys know this is a Facebook Live butt ass naked. Um, <laughs> this is liberating, actually. I think. Is it, did, can you guys like pay me for this? Does this does this mean I'm like a cam guy, a cam boy now? Oh God, oh God, my mom is. I hope my mom's not watching this right now. God. Um, anyways, I hope my roommates don't come home either because I'm like right by the door. But I mean, you know, when in Bali. Um, so, <laughs> anyways, um, I'll never forget being here and and seeing these like. Stack, so every day they, they, the Balinese women come around with these offerings that are weaved out of bas baskets and they have flowers and some food and some money and some like an incense and it smells like incense everywhere you go and it's so magical and, and I remember seeing at the end of every road they would have these like piles of offerings that were literally like four feet tall of generations of offerings and I, and I, and now I come back and those piles are gone and it's kind of nostalgic to be able to have just remembered seeing those you know and to have experienced those um, and then my most my most amazing moment of being in Bali was when we did the dream lab retreat two two years ago I believe yeah 2016 15 and um, there's a there's a celebration called Nyepi, and Nyepi is where, can you guys see my butt in the mirror? Oh my God, this is ridiculous, okay. Um, so Nyepi is the day of silence, and actually Nako sang a song about Nyepi, and it's a really great song, and um, basically the day before, they build these like 30 foot tall effigies, and they're like these demons that they're kicking out of the city, and they, they it takes like 20 local guys to carry these things on their shoulder, and it's like on a bamboo uh, platform, and, and they, they march them out of the city, and everyone's banging on pots and pans, and it's like this big celebration of kicking the demons out of the, the town, and then the next day it goes into a day of silence, and then... Um, and then the following days after that, for actually for like a month, they have a series of, of uh, festivals and, and, and ceremonies, and it's all like a very sacred time. And um, one of the, the practices that they do, other than slaughtering a pig and literally blood like filling the, 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 the gutters, leading out like crazy, but like there's this one celebration where they basically erect these bamboo poles, these bamboo rods that are decorated and they're hung over when it's got an ornament hanging off of it. And um, it's kind of like their Christmas tree. And they hang these things up and it's to call in their ancestors and, um, and then all of the, the young people from, that are working out on the island in different locations come home. And, um, and so, yeah, it was like this really magical moment because I had a meeting up in the mountains and I was riding my scooter. It was a two hour scooter ride up into the mountains. Beautiful ride. And as I'm riding up the mountain for two hours, I'm driving through every village and all these people are hanging up their bamboo 
poles on the side, at the road where they hang it up at the entrance of their, their house. And so everywhere I'm driving, I'm seeing these, you know, grandfathers and kids and like families hanging up. They're pretty much the equivalent of their Christmas tree. And, and I was like just zipping by watching this like magical moment unfold right before my eyes. And, and in that moment, it was like I was, I was able to peer into these people's realities for just an instant. And I was able to experience the magic of that holiday and of that ceremony and that sacred moment of like the different intergenerational, you know, engagement coming together and, and, and seeing that, that nostalgia and that history unfold. And it was just like so beautiful, you know? And that's why I love traveling so much. It's my favorite drug and I'm sober. <laughs> so it's my only drug at this point, you know, I'm like, give it to the main vein. <laughs> and, and it's just like, oh my God, to be able to like witness the beauty of people and to be able to connect with people and to be able to just like celebrate life with them and to experience how other people celebrate, you know, c creating with, with the creator, with the source and like, and, and to, to not have any walls, but to ask like, how do you celebrate this? Like, how do you you know, experience this. And, and so to, to, to open your eyes to a new perspective, and they say that language is the, uh, language is the window to perception. Is that what it is? I don't know, I'm really tired. But like to be able to, you know, like come into these new worlds, it really just like opens your eye to a new perspective and it really does shift your reality. So I just deeply encourage you guys to just get out there and travel the world because it is so beautiful. And it was, it was so cool to come here and like arrive to the house and then meet the, the, um, the couple who's, who's also living here uh, with Rania and Gabriel who uh, have traveled to like 150 countries already and they're, you know, blown up online and making videos and it's like, man, you can do it. You know, you can literally do it. Just like, what's your dream? Go make it happen. You know, and, and I'll end it right here with this, that my dream for so many years was like, I wanted so bad to, to get paid to go to Bali. Like that was seriously my dream. That was like my dream. I was like working so hard for it. I was getting jobs in Jakarta, doing education stuff, and then coming out here as my excuse. And like, man, like to be able to be a part of Ecstatic Awakening Retreat and Dream Beyond and the Elemental Men's Retreat and to be able to like be a part of this incredible uh, tribe of people and, and, you know, this family who's just so committed to, you know, lighting people up and to lighting this world up and to um, expressing and experimenting with with you know deep communication and, and to be able to just like empower so many people to tap into their inner beauty and their 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 joy activating their joy bodies and their their visions of the future is like to be a part of that just gives me so much fulfillment and like makes me feel so uh, grateful to be alive and and to be on this journey so wanted to share this nomad update with you guys I am literally but buns ass naked right now and you guys got to see it firsthand um, or well I'm left-handed so that'd be secondhand but you know <laughs> either way you know it's it's a beautiful day to be butt naked in Bali so send you guys love Ronya says I did a naked Facebook live right there by the pool yesterday <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you Ronya for uh, you know warming it up for me um, we'll show you later when I get home. Cool. I will probably watch it right now. Awesome. I love you guys so much. Uh, hope to see you in the flow. Hope to see you in Bali. And until next time, lots of love and aloha.